How's it going guys? So a lot of you have been wanting me to do some more on the board scoring stuff uh, and there's a lot of controversy in the comments on the last few videos we did about it. Uh, what causes it? Uh, where to get it fixed? And we've kind of waiting a while to do this video. You notice I'm not in my shop. I'm actually in England right now and we're doing a 9-11 teardown. So we're going to flip you around. We're going to show you what's going on, where we're at, and everything about it. Okay, so we're doing engine rebuild on this 997. This, what was this, 2006? 2005. Okay, and if you guys remember BMW Doctor from the BMW videos a long time ago, and we got him into Porsches, so now we spoil forever, and uh, no going back, right? So we got the case house tore down. I hope you get a light in here, Dean, we'll check this out. But we have the case up here, the, the crankcase deal. Now, none of the bearings are bad on this thing. We didn't check the mains. The rod bearings are perfect on it. Uh, there was no nothing indicating that we should pop this apart. We take this apart. You got to put new squirters in. You got to put new bolts in. You got to put new bearings in, and that's probably another thousand dollars. There's no indications that we should ever have to do any of that on that. And then we have everything over here. I know it looks like a tornado went through it. We have the heads off. Those will have to get the valve stem seals done in those. And then we also got to pull some uh, exhaust studs out. Yep, IMS has a newer IMS bearing in it the big bearing and somebody's done this already. So we checked all that, everything's good. We pulled the seal out and we're gonna send it just like that. There's no issue with that at all. All the chain guides, this car's not really at the mileage or replace all that stuff. All of it looks really good. We can't really find much of any other problems. Now, from the bore scoring, we do have some issues here on the piston skirts. And it probably looks a little worse on camera, but I think what we're gonna do we haven't decided yet what we're gonna do with this. It's, the option is replace these, and they're what about eighteen hundred dollars for a set of six. Yep. Um, our machine shop buddy says just to uh, scotch write these down that these actually never hit anything anyway. So we gotta make a decision on that. But all the rod bearings, everything looks pretty good. You can see there, it's got some oil on it, but uh, well within reason. The crank looks perfect on it, and yeah. And one thing we're gonna talk about too. We kept seeing little bits of garbage in there. And he bought this car like this. Look at all the dirt that fell on the floor. And we kept seeing little bits and like sand on top of the pistons. And that filter seven, what, six or seven years old, eight, we figured out. Seven, eight. Yeah, 2017. Um, but this car was tracked. It had different coils in it. Uh, we see this all the time though. Nobody even bothered to, to change the filter, but then they're putting aftermarket coils, everything else like that. This car does have the Mercedes transmission in it. We had a bunch of issues with the bolts in it, uh, not wanting to come out. The transmission's over here on the, on the little cart. And we pretty much had to use easy outs to pull those little bolts out. And how this operates is the Mercedes transmission has a spacer, and then the spacer bolts to the Porsche engine. And with those little adapter bolts, that was just a big mess. We finally got all that alleviated. We'll go ahead and do a service on this transmission and on the differential before we put it back in. And, but yeah, everything else, he got all new control arms for this car, all new coolant lines. It's just a very extravagant amount of money to maintain one of these. And this car pretty much had nothing done at all. You got a light, we'll go ahead and show him the bore so score. So here's the bore score. So we had it only on these two cylinders, that cylinder, that cylinder. And this one you can see is getting ready to start. So, what caused this exactly? Well, it's very, it's really undetermined. Everybody will say different things. Is it from hot spots in the engine, certain parts getting hotter than others? In my opinion, no. Is it from low oil pressure? I don't think so. I think a lot of it was, for one, it's a flat engine, so the pistons are laying down on that side. It always does it on the bottom of the engine where the, with the weight of the pistons and the weight of the rods are laying on that side. But these are basically like an alloy liner with a spray on uh, NASCAR coating. Once the coating starts wearing off, it immediately cuts into that soft metal behind it and just destroys it. So if you keep, this is like mid bore score. If you keep driving it, it'll get to where, he said it was using oil. It'll get to where it's using oil so bad you won't be able to drive it. And eventually it'll actually de-chunk, which means it'll break a big chunk out of the cylinder wall. And that'll be it. So what has to happen next? This has to go to a shop here in the UK and get dropped off, which unfortunately is not open today. And yeah. And what, what do you say, Dean? What was the, the situation here with the, let me zoom out. 
plug them just right up your nose. There you go. With the board, with the sleeves. So the sleeves are going to end up being steel sleeves inserts. They're not going to be nothing from Hartec. It's going to be straight steel liners put in. So full 996 style sleeves. Yeah, full 996 style sleeves. Straight in. It's looking roughly around 1,300 pounds to two grand to do the sleeves. That could take up to two to three weeks to get them done. Um, once they are done, then obviously they'll be back here and obviously I can be rebuilding the engine to put back in the car. But at present, um, yes, it needs to have steel liners. I really don't think it's worth, um, you know, other manufacturers ones, you know, there's loads of different people out there. Over 10 um, grand, 10 grand for Hartec yeah, ones. Yeah, if not more, um, depending on what you want to go for, the four litre, um, lump to rebuild to a four litre is you're looking at nine to 10 grand. If you just want their straight sleeves, I think they're roughly now around three and a half grand for six of them liners, but it still isn't worth the price. Um, as many of you guys probably ain't aware, many of you go, who are experts in this will tell you, this isn't a solution to the problem. This is a fix. Um, and obviously being just a fix, it's not something that obviously Porsche recommend. It can go wrong and many people think that it ain't gonna go wrong ever again but they're very mistaken as well because once it has been rebuilt, um, this problem will happen again in another 100,000 miles. These are track cars, race car engines, it's gonna happen. There is no trying to stop it happening, it's going to happen, they're gonna need rebuilding every 100,000 miles. Will I live to see this car another 100,000 miles? Probably yeah, we had not. A cut. We had the phone ring, so no big deal. Uh, Dean, we were talking about GT3 stuff and GT2 and turbo cars. Everybody says, those don't do it, but we don't know. Because those cars don't have 100,000 miles on No, they don't. And that's just it. Everyone's saying, oh, we're, we're putting these liners in from cars that don't have problems with bore scoring, but they're not at the mileage to have bore scoring. You've got to remember this car is now 17 years old. And to be honest, it to be on now, what, 100K is absolutely brilliant to uh, have 17 years of life being tracked and abused. And uh, this car has gone through hell. Yeah. It needs oh, that life with everything. the wrong owner. Yeah, very bad life with the wrong owner. And you know, it's done very well to get to 100K and only just have ball score. And to be honest, the ball scoring isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. The scratches are quite light, but it's still ticking. And obviously when I bought the car, it was using oil very, very quickly. Um, you know, you could top it up to four and it would use the whole of, of the oil you put in, the five litres of oil within 50 miles of driving it. So it was badly ball scored, but it doesn't look that bad on the liners, but the amount of oil it was burning makes you feel like it was very, very serious, which it actually wasn't. Which I guess, I mean, even the scratches that are in that, a lot of oil could pass through the grooves where, this, where the ring's not sealing. Yeah. And uh, But my red came and got like that to where it was just oil just disappearing all at once and quickly. And then it would not use for a little bit and just boom, a bunch would be gone and be down to add. And that car ended up having bore score. And the blue came and does not have bore scoring, but it definitely could have bore scoring at any time. We don't know. And both fully expecting that. But to be honest with you, finally tearing one down this far, we've done 996 stuff before. Tearing one down this far, it really wasn't that much more work at all. No. It was not near what we thought was gonna go on. Uh, one other thing I wanna show you guys too real quick. We talked just a minute about uh, mixing, cool and mixing with oil. And we did that 996, that red 996 on the channel a while back. And that car when it left here was still mixing, even after we pulled it apart. and. The shop didn't find any problems with the heads, but one of you was commenting in the comments that this oil ring right here, if that was leaking, that could leak oil into coolant. And that very well may have been what's wrong with that car. So if you guys have a 996 mixing and you have the heads off of it, I think you should go, well, you almost should go a little further and split the case and replace those seals too. I really do. Obviously, you got to put the pistons back in. It's a little bit of pain in the butt, but I think that would be a little time, not any money. You get the you get the kit, the gas is free in the kit, so it doesn't cost you a penny while you're there. Just a little more time, a little more hassle, and you can reseal your case too and uh, do all that. We noticed there is a non-name brand oil filter in it, even though it's relaxed. When we popped this out yesterday, it was kind of smashed a little bit, and we see that a lot with non-name brand filters. On these, we always use either a Bosch or a man filter on these cars. Uh, you can use a Hintz or whatever you want to. It's, it's your preference, but don't use just a no-name Chinese one. So write in the comments what you guys think. Should we reuse these piston skirts? Only the skirt's a little scuffed up. Uh, a lot of people are saying yes. I think yes. Uh, Dean was hesitant about it, but there's only two of them that have that. 
pistons are what five hundred some dollars a piece for new ones. Yeah. And uh, if you just buy them singly, or should we just buy a used set of factory pistons and pop them on these rods? That's the whole debate on it, though. Um, we'll do new rings, rod bearings, rod bolts, everything in this. That's not the issue. Just how far to go with it. Uh, will this car ever have a problem using these pistons? My theory is no, it won't. Uh, but write in the comments what you guys think. I'm sure a lot of you be saying, oh my God, you gotta, you gotta get new ones. But you gotta stop. At some point, you're gonna have $30,000 just to rebuild this engine. You just cannot do that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we're gonna stop this video right here. We might do another video before I leave and we'll be back at a little bit later date to put this engine back together. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.